All right. So uh, I get the pleasure of being the last person that stands between you and the end of the conference. Um, so I had a hard time with this one um, because I wasn't sure where to begin. So I thought I would begin where I left off last year, and that was introducing this word to you all. And if you were here last year, yeah, see, if you were here last year, remember, this is the word, whoop, and you have to say it really high pitch. Try that. And you usually do it twice in a row. Whoop, whoop. So now if there's anything you like that I talk about, you can use that. Otherwise, just please remain silent. But, <laughs> but I do want to, you know, <coughs> excuse me, just let you know it was the word of the year in 2007. And uh, it became an official word in 2011, which means that English teachers have to accept it in papers. But I wanted to catch you up. So three weeks ago, we just added some new words. So three weeks ago, these are now official words, students in the front. You can now use these in every English feature, uh, paper you want. Yes, I know, YOLO, uh, cray cray, an official word, right? SMH, we have a subtweet, that's where you tweet somebody, but you leave off the at sign, so it's a way to bully on Twitter, just interesting. There's a ICYMI, and there's that one which is self-explanatory. All now official words that you can use in your writing. And so I was thinking about learning too and this idea of, of community and where we're at today. And I went back to the website and I was looking at this line of what this conference is supposed to be. And I've been struggling with this lately. That the idea, one of our founding principles of this conference is pushing ideas of what a conference should be. And it has led to things that have been very interesting to me because this conference is about participants and just recently there was an article written about the top 25 conferences around the world for educators and we're number five. That's pretty incredible to me because what I think we do better than any conference I've ever gone to and I've gone to my fair share is that we create a community that is learning too. No matter if, you, if this is your first conference or your eighth conference, you are part of a community that is supportive, a community that is constantly pushing. When we founded this conference in 2007, one of our goals was how do we create a conference for the early adopters? How do we create a conference for the 2.5% that are constantly pushing what the future of education should be? That's what this conference is about, and last year, I left you with this, that when we're looking at change, we always run into the big frickin' wall. And a lot of times I like to call the wall Tawadi, or that's the way we've always done it. And I challenged you at the end of last year that what we need to do is find out ways to get around the wall, whether it's under it or over it. But what our job is as early adopters is to find those walls and knock them down. And we've been battling this in education for a long time. So I went back and was doing some research and read a book by David Thornburg, who is doing research on this. And it actually shows that in 1703 at a teacher's conference, we, the early adopters, had to fight the battle to get slates in the classroom. Because if students use slates, they would not know how to use an abacus to solve math problems. And how would they solve a math problem if the slate dropped and broke? In 1815, early adopters had to fight the battle of pencil and paper because if students started using pencil and paper, they would lose the skill of cleaning the slate. <laughs> and what would happen if we ran out of paper? In 1941, parents throw a big hissy fit about the use of the fountain pen in education because, and I quote, it will never be adopted by the business world. It is way too extravagant of a device. And students will lose the skill of how to sharpen a pencil with a knife. In 1980, the debate rages on around the use of calculators. And if we ever allow students to do math with calculators, the argument goes, they will forget how to use the multiplication table in the back of the textbook. In 1995, some of you will remember the debate that there is absolutely no way we will ever be able to teach teachers how to use email. 
Because in order for teachers to use email, we have to give them all a computer, and there's absolutely no way that'll ever happen in education. In 1997, we had to fight the battle to actually say that the internet was worth creating. Yes, NIST, this is your first website <laughs> that I got from the Wayback Machine from 1997, huh? <laughs> and I can only imagine the conversation that happened at NIST while somebody's putting this together. <laughs> like, nobody's going to look at it, <laughs> right? What's this internet thing? In 1999, we, the early adopters, have to convince administration that the LCD projector was the future. And I had an administrator come to me and say, tell me one thing that the LCD projector can do that the overhead can't. <laughs> in fact, we do not see the overhead projector actually decline in sales until 2002. See, change takes time, yet the early adopters continue to battle them. In 2006, we started having the conversations in school on whether or not we should allow students on Wi-Fi, because heaven forbid we give them access to information. In 2010, the debate was, what if they use their own devices in schools? You see, the 2.5% that we are find the walls and we knock them down. That's what Learning 2 is. And we have new walls. This was released a few days ago, right? A few weeks ago. What are we going to do? Are we going to say that students can't have this in class? Or are we going to be early adopters, continue to be the Learning 2 community we are, and say this might be the greatest contribution to our health curriculum ever? Are we going to look at this when students start showing up in class? And are we going to say there's absolutely no way because students might record their teacher in class without them knowing? Or are we going to say we've just changed science because students can be watching the video, have both hands on the experiment, and by saying, okay, glass, record, record a video as the experience is happening. Are we going to take this technology and are we going to ban it in our schools? Or are we going to fight for it and say, what happens in our history classes when students can put on a pair of goggles and actually be in the crowd at the Martin Luther King speech? You see, what I'm going to challenge you to do is find the walls at your school and then knock them down. That's what Learning 2 is about. Learning 2 is about trying to give you ideas to inspire you to not just go back and change something or go back and find the wall and stop, but to find the wall and continue to beat at it until we knock it down. We are continuing that as a conference as well. Tonight I'd like to announce that next year's conference will take place if you want to mark your calendars, and I'm proud to announce that it will happen at the International School Manila. Many of you are following the Twitter feed and you've heard a lot about Africa. We are launching our second Africa conference as well. The school and dates are in the process of being figured out and so you will find those on the website as well. I would also like to announce that we are opening applications for schools that want to host this conference in 2016. And think about what that could mean for your school community. Think about what that means for the wall maybe at your school, when your school gets 40 participants to come and be part of this. We are also launching this conference in Europe, the Middle East, and yes, once again, we will be taking applications for Mars. <laughs> and I'd like to end with just what you, the community, have been able to allow us, the advisory, to do. The thing I'm probably most excited about is that because we are going global, because we continue to find walls on continents and international schools around the world, that we've gotten to a place where we are going to become our own nonprofit. And that's going to allow us to expand even farther, to offer even more, to give back in different ways. And I just want you to understand that this is a community. You are learning too. Without you, it doesn't work.